Hey guys, Jay here. Welcome to Eons of Battle. And I have gotten out every single miniature I painted this year. I laid them all out in front of me. I've been staring at them for about an hour. Oh. I made a very similar video last year going through every model that I had painted, or not going through, but just taking a look at and analyzing every model I had painted. And I think it was like 430 miniatures, and I thought that that was an absolutely wild number. And I think I actually set myself some goals for this year to not paint as many models and maybe to try a little bit harder on the models that I do paint. And I utterly, utterly failed because I painted more models than I did last year. Ah, oh, it is, it is kind of magical. First thing I would like to do is go over some of the negatives and some of the things that I don't think I knocked out of the ballpark or I'm not completely satisfied with. And then I think I'm gonna move on to my favorite pieces, which might just end up being me going through every single thing because I'm really, really happy with what I was able to accomplish this year. But starting off, starting off with my sister's novitiates. I painted these because I was watching tons of not just makeup, Marco Frissoni, one of the most beautiful painters out there painting today. And uh, I tried to follow some of his videos step by step. And I think I did a very good job, but my color selection was garbage. I used a magenta ink, kind of a, a teal blue ink and a red ink. And um, I just think it led to my colors looking very, very ridiculous and silly. And so overall, I'm like very happy with this kill team, but I think my colors are crazy. Like I almost want to pop these into Photoshop and just play with like the color modulation tool because I had an idea in my head and I think that idea was like light pink, maybe a little bit more of a greener gold, definitely not turquoisey robes that are mostly black. Like I'm not sure exactly because I just went for it and that's that's what I always do. I just grab whatever colors that my heart desires and then I just start painting a model and it often it's fine and sometimes it really, really works out. And sometimes it's the Sisters Novitiates. I think that they're fine. I have enjoyed playing with these miniatures and I don't really dislike them at all. But uh, in my opinion, you know, I, I put them I put them in the back of the pile for a reason. <laughs> but speaking of something kind of towards the front, my Gene Stealer cult kill team, my Worm Blade kill team. I love these models. I don't think there's anything wrong with the actual minis, but I have been learning a lot about basing this year. Basing is a really, really tricky thing because I think that the bases kind of ruin these miniatures. The guys are kind of white and magenta and um, green and tan and the bases are also white, magenta, green, and tan. And so you can't really see the silhouette of these deuterinos because the base is the exact same colors. I was thinking uh, yellow, yellow is like my basing crutch. Yellow always looks good because my models are never yellow. And so if I have my miniatures based on yellow bases, they're gonna really, really pop. But I think the worm blade was Finally, I was like, I can't paint more yellow bases because yellow would look lovely, but I can't paint more yellow bases. So I'm going to do the forest because I never do forest bases. And I reminded myself why I never do forest bases because they look really bad. Uh, when I do them, I have to learn how to do them properly. Although I really like these grass tufts. I have no idea where they came from. I have never seen them before or since in my collection, <laughs> but they look kind of cool. But yeah, these guys, I'm, I'm definitely going to rebase these suckers. Maybe not yellow, maybe I'll go with like an orange or a red or something kind of out there because um, I do like my worm blade. I haven't gotten them in Games of Kill Team yet, but I am excited to because they have some really cool stuff and I think they'll play really, really well on Into the Dark. So yeah, oh, oh dear little friends. The last thing on the list of things that just did not jimmy my jams, that did not flim my flams is my Daughters of Cain uh, group. The, this is um, this is a set the games workshop. I think they might still sell it, but it was originally a um, Warhammer Underworlds team, and the models are lovely and beautiful. But my paint job 
ended up being really, really dark. It's something I really have to work on in the future. I think I've slowly learned how to do it a little bit, is how to not let things be so, so dark. Because darkness, darkness is <sighs> heavy. Like it makes the models not as fun to look at. Things don't jump out to you as much. Um, I think I might try to start priming models in gray and then zenithaling them white just to try to make sure that the colors can remain bright because brighter models are easier to see on the tabletop. It's easier to see the details. And I think it'll just lead to slightly stronger paint jobs. So that's that's one thing that I have learned. I like these Daughter of Cain ladies. I think that they look fine, but I think they would look a lot better if they were maybe 10 degrees lighter than they are right now. They're also very hard to paint. Um, I was thinking about starting a Daughters of Cain army for um, Warhammer Age of Sigmar, and these guys cured me of that desire real quick because they are hard to paint. They have very intricately detailed clothing and skin, human skin, I guess all skin really, but human skin is even harder because everybody knows what human skin looks like and can instantly tell when it doesn't look like human skin. And so, and these ba these these ladies have a lot of skin. They, they show a lot of skin, so very, very difficult to paint. Um, I, I don't, I really like the Forces of Order, and I do plan on collecting a lot of Age of Sigmar armies, but man, the Daughters of Cain are going to be dead last, because I painted five, and I think I'm done. <laughs> but I get to play with them in uh, Underworlds, and I do believe that, that most of these characters uh, have rules for Warcry, so I'm, gonna get to, I'm definitely going to get to play with these units, but um, I'm not going to paint anymore. Those are the models that I am not completely in love with, but literally every single other thing I am absolutely in love with. One other thing, though, that I would like to say is I'm a little disappointed by the variety of stuff here. And that's a double edged sword, because I think that the crazy variety of different units and characters and things helped me to learn a lot about painting this year. Like if this table was just half Black Templar and half Necrons, all I would have done is gotten a little bit better at Black Templar and Necrons, but because there's 14 kill teams and 200 zombies and 32 gun gun warriors and an Imperial Knight and Tau, I learned a ton and I got to use tons and tons of different colors and techniques and textures and all sorts of different things. I, I now have a deep, deep love of Army Painter Speed Paint. I, I'm okay with Games Workshop Contrast Paint, but it's a little, it dries a little patchy and it's very expensive. And I just, I think that that is a, it's been a huge, huge boon to me and my painting journey. But there's not a lot here that's truly playable. Um, the kill teams are all playable because it's just like six to 14 units. Actually, I think every single one of them is 14 because I painted more than I needed to just to make sure that I had every single option. But very few things here are truly playable. The gun gun army is playable. My uh, I painted the entire starter box for Mantic's Dead Zone, which is a lovely, lovely war game. If you've ever considered getting into a, like a kill team, Dead Zone is cheaper and much, much simpler to play. And it plays really, really well. It's based on a grid based system. It's really, really a nice game. Um, and I mean, I painted all the entire everything, the starter box and both uh, both forces in two days. So there's tons of stuff here that's just squads, one squad of orc knobs, three ultramarines, <laughs> one squad of Dark Eldar Hellions, literally the only five Dark Eldar models I own. You know, not part of an army, not part of a kill team. I just thought that they looked neat, and so I decided to paint them, and it was tons of fun, but uh, I do want to play games, and so I think moving forward, I'm going to try to focus on things that are going to lead to more games. Ah, speaking of games, I just want to talk about some not 40k games, because this table is dominated by 40k, but these Mantic uh, Mars Attacks Martians are one of my favorite things. Oprah's favorite things is one of these Martians. They're so cute. I was in a bookstore. I found an old copy of the now discontinued game Mantic's Mars Attacks. And it came, it had everything was still new in the box and it was wonderful. And so I painted up 10 of the Martians. I have 10 more Martians to paint, 10 soldiers, and then 10 um, citizens. 
and I really, really want to get those painted because um, I want to I want to play with my friends. I want to play some little Mars Attacks. I have played a, uh, one game of Mars Attacks, and it's exactly like Mantix Dead Zone. It's essentially a hybrid of Mantix Dead Zone rules, but there's a deck of cards, and every turn you can draw and play cards to have random things happen throughout the game. So it's a really, really fun hybrid between a board game and a tabletop war game. But yeah, I really like the Martians. They come with little clear domes. So you paint your Martian's head and then you glue on the clear dome and it's lovely. It's, ah, I love these little things. Also speaking of non-40K, Gun Gun Army, all, uh, all printed from a company called Black Remnants. Nick did all the printing and he printed the shields in pink, which is lovely. They're actually transparent and you can see the Gun Gun through them. And that is an entire army for Star Wars Legion. I don't have rules for them, but I think I'm just going to borrow rules from the Rebel Alliance and run them like that. I've got Kadu Riders. Kadu. Ah, so lovely. Speaking, though, of other war games, that was Star Wars Legion. Now I am really, really wanting to get into Conquest, the last argument of kings. I don't know who the kings are and I don't know what this argument is about, but I really, really like the minis. I've actually painted the heroes for three different factions, the dwarves, Vikings dwarves, the um, old dominion, which is kind of the Roman legionary zombies and um, the orcs. I forget what they're called, but the orcs, I have the leader of the orcs painted up and you can probably see behind me, there's some, uh, some boxes of other stuff. So I really, really want to get into Conquest. I got to play a demo game at Adepticon and it was really, really fun. I've never got, I've never played a rank and flank war game before. And so I think that's a, I really want to experience some of that. And then last but not least, not related to any games, but I painted this Black Templar bust. And I had never painted a bust before. And I found it a really, really interesting experience. I've painted well over 200 Black Templar Space Marines who look just like this, but doing it 200 times the size was a really, really interesting and unique experience. It was really fun. And uh, I mean, if, if you if you are somebody out there who has an army like you are the Ultramarines guy, you are the Orc guy, you are the Grey Knights guy, you or gal. You should definitely go find like a 3D printable bust or maybe even like a bust that you can purchase and paint it up because it's wild. It's it's like a it's like a magic trick or it just it's it gives you really weird feelings to be painting on a Black Templar symbol that you've painted on hundreds of times before. But all of a sudden it's huge doing the eyeballs, doing the free handing, scratches, leather. Uh, purity seals. It was really, really fun. And it really kind of got me kickstarted into wanting to paint a lot more Black Templar because painting Black Templar is like breathing for me. It just happens. <laughs> doesn't It doesn't bring joy. It doesn't bring sorrow. It just is. It's one of the fundamental forces of the universe. But uh, after painting this sucker, I was like, wow, I, I, I learned a lot on this and I want to, I want, I had a weird experience and I want to have that weird experience again. And so I, I have also painted up a bunch more Black Templars, which I painted up my favorite Black Templar units, probably my favorite Space Marine units ever, the Centurions. These are both the Centurion Devastators and the Centurion Assault Centurions because they are all magnetized up with all the weapon options. But I love the Centurions. And keeping the Black Templarness going, I painted up some Blade Guard veterans and some Black Templar Sword Brotherins. I'm finally starting to get some Primaris Black Templar goodness to join the army. I mean, I you know, I have 30 Primaris Intercessors, but who cares about those? Uh, so I painted up all of these guys. I now have, what, 13 Black Templar models who all have power swords, which is almost enough. And they're just so big and imposing and impressive. I have a big bucket of Black Tem Primaris Black Templar models that I need to paint up, and I'm very excited to paint them up because they just look so lovely. Ah, oh, Black Templar. But you know what I think I enjoyed a lot more than 40K and Black Templar this year was painting up my Malifaux teams. I had a wonderful time painting my Malifaux showgirl performers, and so I... Literally on a whim, I was at a friendly local game store and uh, I think we had just demoed 
um, some Malifaux. And so I just bought an entire team, just like literally looking at the shelf and being like, all right, what's, I need four purple boxes. Cause, <laughs> cause I don't know what anything is. So I'm just gonna get the, I'm gonna buy the purple boxes. And I got Nekima and her crew, the Nephilim, the black blooded. And I painted them all up with oil paints. And boy, oh boy, was that a nightmare, which is great because these are very nightmare units in the Neverborn uh, category of Malifaux. But I don't know, man. I keep trying with oils and it keeps being really hard and tricky and difficult to do. And I, I am, you know, I don't want to toot my own horn too much, but I'm pretty darn good with acrylics. I'm really good at washes and contrast and glazing and highlighting and layering and dry brushing and all the things. And I feel like I can achieve those effects very, very quickly with acrylic paints. But supposedly oil painting is just this magical solution where if you, you know, it'll do perfect washes and it'll do perfect blends and highlights. And I've watched some really, really impressive stuff like from Not Just Maka and uh, some other people do oil paint and it does look pretty darn good, but it's still a bummer. Like it takes a while to dry. I, I used a different materials to try to speed up the drying process, but it still takes a while to dry. It's I haven't I need to keep playing with it. I need to keep trying, but I feel like I don't need to because I can already do everything that the oil paint can do with um, acrylic paints. Um, I do really, really like how this team turned out, but it took so long to paint them that uh, I painted these live on camera and everybody was like, oh, we're still we're still painting the Nephilim. Really? <laughs> Are we ever going to be done with this? Because it took like probably three or four weeks. And yes, it did take that long. But uh, I do like them a lot. I love Malifaux. Everything for Malifaux is so cool. A lot of these things were done in big batches and it did take quite a while to do each individual project. But one thing that I peppered in throughout the year was Star Wars Legion models. Star Wars Legion models, they paint up really, really quickly. I think it's a little bit to do with the simplicity of the models themselves and because they're based on Star Wars characters and Star Wars characters are like designed for the camera. They're designed to be almost cartoony. And so I think everything is a little bit simpler. And so, you know, in between big old projects, I would just buy Star Wars Legion models, take that box home, open it up and paint it that evening and it would be done and finished. I bought two boxes of Battle Droid Steps and, and it, it, look at it, just look at it. It looks beautiful. It turned out so well, so simply, so quickly. It's almost all just um, speed paints. And I just love it. Star Wars Legion is my palette cleanser. It's the models are easy to paint. They paint up really, really quickly. It's easy to get them done. I love playing Star Wars Legion and I plan to have every single miniature that they have ever released for the game. And I am making very good progress on that. But yeah, Star Wars Legion models are just a little, there's just something special about them that I really, really appreciate. Even models like these Dark Troopers, which have shiny black armor, even shiny black armor only took probably two evenings to paint. And by evening, I mean like an hour or two before bed. And now I have a full squad of six that are ready to defend um, Krennic. The evil, the evil engineer of the Death Star. Technically, he wasn't the engineer. Um, Mads Mikkelmack was the engineer, and then he was the bad guy making him do it. But I really like Star Wars Legion. And literally at this point, because I've bought so much Star Wars Legion stuff, like probably almost what feels like a couple of times a month, I'll be like, all right, I've been painting, but I need to not be painting, but I'm not going to stop painting. So I'm just going to go grab some Star Wars Legion off the shelf and just knock it out. And Finishing something is an amazing rush of energy. You know, you just feel great. If you're ever in like a painting slump, I super suggest just going to grab something off the shelf and being like, you know what? I'm just going to fix these guys shoulder pads because I don't like how I painted the shoulder pads. You fix those shoulder pads. All of a sudden you put them back on the shelf and they're done and crispy and you like them even more. That's going to snowball into you wanting to do even more stuff. What's so we've got three kill teams, about 14 bodies each, probably 20 mini wargaming models. 
These about 25 miniatures right here are very interesting because they are our models. This year we worked with an artist called Licorice and she helped us to create a whole bunch of miniatures that we made available originally to our Patreon supporters, but now you can get them as STLs from comics, games, and things. But they are our miniatures and they did not exist before this year, before we created them. And it was kind of a magical experience to be painting like super crazy, unique, never before seen miniatures like the Squid Mage, the Vine Knight, the Lord Acolyte, and all of these little demonettes, the Warriors of Paradise. These models are really, really cool. I stare at them all the time and it's it's really neat. But if you are a current member of our Patreon, don't feel left out because there's tons of stuff over there too. Every single month we have new terrain packs ready to fill up your entire game boards. This month we have the Wasteland cars ready to drive donuts around your board. We also make one extra episode of Eons of Battle every single week where we take a look at our viewers' miniatures and give them some critiques and ideas of how to improve their painting. We host live Discord hangouts and have painting guide PDFs to some of the miniatures that are on this table. And we have merch, link in the description. And you can find the link to those models in the description. Ah, seen it all laid out in all of its glory. I mean, it's mostly zombies, but still, it's beautiful. And I am very, very proud of it. But I would like to make some New Year's resolutions going into the next year. I would like to paint less randomly. Still keep a little bit of randomly because it's good It's good for, for the painting knowledge. But I would like to see more finished armies. Uh, recently, Nick and I played a game of Warcry, so there will definitely be lots of Warcry teams. And also, I still have like 13 teams left to build and paint for Kill Team before I have them all, so I definitely have to do that. But I want to see lots more playability on this board next year, because right now it's a little bit scattershot. And so I actually did get a box of Sylvaneth, the Christmas Battle Force for the Sylvaneth, and the Christmas Battle Force for the Death Guard. And so those are definitely going to be represented here in all their glory. Yes, they're definitely going to get finished. Jay, watch this video again and make sure that that happens. But I want to have a little bit more armies and warbands here than just scattershot weirdness. But oh yeah, and I forgot to say, on this table right now, every model that I painted this year comes out to 532 miniatures. 532 miniatures means that on average, I painted about a model and a half every single day of this year. And I don't know what that number means. <laughs> this probably doesn't mean anything good, but uh, I, I just think it's neat. I just think that that is what happened. It's been a roller coaster of a year. I'm very proud of all of the videos and the things that I was able to do this year. This this video is really fun to make. A video that I'm not going to make is everything I bought this year because that video would make me too sad. <laughs> it would be the last video on this YouTube channel. You would see all of me painting all of this stuff and then a video called tallying up everything I bought this year. And then for some reason, never making another video on that whole on the channel ever again. But yeah, it is really fun to look at all of these lovely, lovely miniatures. Yeah, it's going to take me a while to clean them up. Okay, I'm sad now. Bye.